That's right. Catherine, you ready? Claire, yeah, we're going to go live now, yeah? Yeah. All right, that's it. Thanks, Jonathan. Good morning, everybody on the screen and in the, in the chamber and members of the public who might be watching this. This is the meeting of the Grants Advisory Committee, Friday, 25th of March, 10 a.m. Um, I'm going to go through the agenda. Uh, <clears throat> apologies, number one. Any apologies, Gary? Thanks, Chair. Uh, we have apologies from councillors. Uh, well, Councillor Bill Handley and Councillor Ken Daunton is with us virtually today. Lovely. And just to check that we're corrupt. Yes, Chair. I can confirm. Thank you very much. Corrupt. Thank you. Right, members. Um, uh, <coughs> uh, any <anyway>, declarations <coughs> of interest? I have. You have, Councillor Errington. Well, just that there is um, a jubilee presentation from my uh, villages and Fendrake Village Hall and Swavesey Sheddit are all part of my patch. Thank you very and much. And I have discussed things with them, but I come afresh. Brilliant. Um, I have one with regards to the Mother Warden Scheme update, which is agenda item number four as a trustee of Melbourne Mother Warden Scheme non-pecuniary and I think Wadden is one of our my patch who make an application under the Jubilee uh, what have you um, I think that's it but again I haven't had any other than recommending it uh, Claire have you got any at all no I don't think so there's nothing from um, my patch okay thank you very much indeed okay if something uh, occurs to me during the meeting I'll, I'll speak up but yeah, superb, yep. thank you. Okay, agenda item number three. <clears throat> Morning, John. Um, minutes of the previous meeting, I'll just go to the usual, and that's on page one of our agenda. So page one and page two. Any, and I'll take that as a sign them off. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okie doke. Right, so we're now going on to the agenda proper. Uh, agenda item number four, which is the mobile warding scheme funding update. And I believe that uh, Catherine is going to be presenting. Thank you, Catherine. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, so you'll remember that we ran a procurement exercise to try and broaden the coverage of mobile warden schemes and community warden schemes across the district. Um, and that at the end of that procurement exercise, there was uh, a little bit of funding unallocated. Um, and back in January 21, um, it was agreed that we would ring fence some of that unspent funding, 40,000, to um, bridge the gap between the end of the full year, the full, at the end of the two years of full funding, and when the next round of mobile warden scheme funding started for those new schemes that were then in limbo between the, the two periods of funding. Um, that 40,000 was to be um, used for the 10 schemes that uh, were created and to get them through the 18 month period that, where there was a gap. What we're just saying today is that that being agreed, we'd like to add to that pot the refunded money that's come back from uh, the gambling gay scheme. They um, have unfortunately had to close their scheme um, not for want of trying very, very hard to, to get it off the ground, um, but they've, having spent some of the funding, returned to us 5,439.87. And we just wanted to um, get agreement that the, the best place for that funding is to go back into that pot with the 40,000 um, and then that be used in October of this year, again, to, to bridge the gap between the end of the full full period of funding and the next mobile warden scheme grant scheme opening uh, next time around. So that's it, really. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Colleagues. Colleagues. Seems quite a reasonable proposal and, and fits with all the things that we have agreed in the past, so I certainly have no objections. I think we have discussed this in the past to some uh, extent, haven't we? And um, I think, Claire, are you in agreement? Yeah, yes, I... You've gone mute again. You've gone on to mute. Sorry, do you think there's a possibility 
uh, that the gambling gay arrangement might start up again or is it sort of completely I think at this point they consider it to be completely closed. They did try, they tried, I think you remember we came back to you with a slight change in the um, objectives for the scheme and we tweaked it for them and they tried a different, slightly different way. Um, but I think the networks around and about in the Gambling Gay area are such that there isn't actually as much need for the scheme um, as was first anticipated. In the future that may change and when the next mobile ward scheme round of funding opens, if they wanted to try again then they would be very, very welcome to apply again for more money uh, at that point. But at the moment, it's suggested that this just goes in, keeps this keeps the refund in line with the original purposes of the money, which was to go to older people schemes from, from mobile and services. OK, all right, thanks. I'm happy with this then. Thank you. So can I just say that um, my experience uh, during the pandemic was that relatives were very anxious about their um, older people and were reluctant to join the scheme. And, and that reluctance is just beginning to be relieved by people going back to work and, and not working at home quite so much. Um, so I think it will turn around, but it, it, at the moment it's a bit of a, a dead duck. And I know that Leslie, in her role, is in constant contact with them. So if there were a need and they did want to start again, then they would. They had recruited a warden. They had done everything they needed to do to get set up, but it just didn't seem to have um, enough clients to make it work. So um, if that does change, then we will come back to you and let you know. Um, but as I say, if, if it's in time with the next round of, of mobile ward scheme funding, then they would be welcome to apply to that just as the others do. Um, and if it's before that, we'll come back to you and let you know. That's brilliant. I mean, I think really we just to say the staff are extremely proactive. So this, this group offers us, it's absolutely superb. So that's great. Um, just, to, just to check then, Catherine, we've got the options. Um, 24 and 25, the alternative options in 25. I'm assuming that you would prefer or we would prefer the option 24, uh, paragraph 24, the committee asks to recommend these funds be secured for the original purpose, i.e. support the older part, older people by part funding the new warden schemes, as, as we agreed in the outset, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Okay, then. Um, I don't think we need a show of hands, we're all in agreement, so are you okay with that, John? Uh, yes. Thank you. And that's just for anyone who doesn't reckon, uh, the lead member for finance, Councillor John Williams, is in the uh, chamber with us, so that's who I just asked. Thanks. Right. Yes. Okay. So you're all done on that one then, Catherine, yeah? On that one, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, agenda item number five, community chest funding applications. Now, Emma, is that going to be you or are you sharing yes. this with Catherine? Um, that's me. Hi. You okay? Uh, hiya. Good morning. Uh um, we've got a number of applications um, this month. We've got 70, um, 17, I think it's in total. Um, yeah. Of that, we have seven Jubilee applications. Shall I go through the longer ones first and leave the Jubilee ones at the end? Is that the best way to do it? That's yes, what I was thinking. Okay, so our first application is from Steeple Morden Bowls Club. Um, they have been running since 1948. They consist of 50 members um, who come from both Steeple Morden and the surrounding villages. Member subscription is £65 for the year. Um, the club benefits from a qualified coach. Uh, members play in three county leagues, friendlies, as well as inter-club competitions. And in the winter, they can play inside um, as they've got short mat bowling. Um, transport is provided for those unable to drive and during lockdown paths were widened and ramps installed to provide wheelchair access. Um, they've tried to encourage younger members to join but that's been unsuccessful unfortunately but they do have plans to open um, some open days and attract more members. Um, the clubhouse is also used for bingo, quiz and race nights, afternoon film shows and funeral wakes um, which are free for the members. Um, Barbecues are also held in the summer months. Um, so the, basically the, the application is um, for a second hand um, mower. 
so sorry, the club has two mowers for the green. However, the second mower is no, un, unable to cut the grass um, efficiently. So it needs a complete overhaul. Um, so <clears throat> replacing with a second hand mower is proving to be more expensive. So they are requesting um, parts, labour, collection and delivery of um, a new mower from a local company. Um, total costs are £1,199.53. Um, Councillor Heather William Williams is in favour, very supportive. Um, the parish council have been contacted um, for match funding, but they've said in fairness to other clubs in the village, um, they are unable to, but they've also um, set aside a fund for a building on the rec recreation ground, so they're, they're unable to at this point. So, um, thoughts, please. Thank you, Emma. Can I just check for, before we go into debate, if you wish? Yeah. Um, the remaining budget on the sheet on page 14 of our agenda. I just want to make sure that yes. we've, we've got enough money left uh, in the budget to service if we were to go through and, and uh, approve every grant. Yes, I believe there's three thousand pounds remaining. I haven't got that sheet of three, the moment. Three, two, I five, think three seven, thousand. Seven. Just, just over three thousand pounds. Yes. And don't forget the seventy-four p. <laughs> we have right. um, a bit of an alteration. Somebody, since the report was um, published, um, somebody is requesting seventy pounds, seventy-one pounds less. So that that figure is going to be a little bit more. So I think it's yeah. about three thousand two hundred. I think in total. So, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, in that, in that the case, chair, uh, chair, if I may, um, yeah, is that okay? yeah, go I've, got, ahead. I've got another question on this page, actually. Um, uh, under the uh, on the table, um, under biodiversity, um, we've got ten thousand pounds there. Have we had any applications uh, on this line? No, not yet. No. Um, it's quite new. I just wonder if we perhaps need to do a bit more publicity about it. That, that that will be done, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. I have a question for the lead member for finance, actually, at the moment, if I may, John. Um, that 10,000 that uh, Claire has highlighted runs out at the end of this month. So if we don't have any applications in this month, as soon as it runs out at the end of this month, <laughs> what would be the criteria, as far as you're concerned, with regards to using that within the community chest if we have an abundance of applications? Um, I think I can't see any reason not to, but of course um, we are then talking about the new financial year. Yeah. Um, so we would need to um, put that money into next year's budget. Um, and I haven't had a, a proposal to no. do that. No, I just... So, um, as it stands, um, as you say, the money runs out at the end of this financial year, and in the new financial year, we can then make a decision whether or not to carry that money forward or to put it back into the general fund. Thank you. Catherine? Yes, I was just going to say that funding came from what was actually in the planning um, the planning area. So what we've done is already contact Jane Green and just ask her whether she would be open to us asking for permission to do that or whether that needs to be returned to their budgets over there. So um, we've, we've started to ask those questions. I don't think we've had a reply yet, uh, Emma, but um, we have, we've started that process just so that you know, Councillor Williams. Thank you very much, Catherine. Brilliant. Okay, Peter. Um, just a quick comment from me. So I know that I have a couple of my parishes who are looking to start some biodiversity related projects. So if it's possible that we can carry it forward and utilize it next year, I think it will be utilized. That's that's my sense. Yeah, I agree. I think we're, we're I think all four of us are in agreement here, aren't we? Is it so? Yeah. OK, right. OK, back to the agenda then with the Steeple Morden Bowls Club. Has anyone got any comments with regards to this? So, I suppose my first question is why do they need two lawnmowers? I can usually manage to cut mine. <laughs> um, I, well, yes, precisely. Um, I'm not entirely sure, to be fair. Um, it was something that crossed my mind as well, but obviously that there's obviously a need there because they do have two and they're actually asking for parts for a second one. So 
there's obviously a need. I don't know if, um, you know, potentially they split the work between two people if it's a little bit hard work. I don't, I don't, I, I can ask the question, of course. Um, but, you know. Um, um, uh, Chair? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, um, do, do they know that um, we don't allow um, petrol mowers? Um, I, I didn't know that was actually something that we didn't allow. I thought that um, everything could get, you know, the green options could get considered, but I think they had looked into it and this was just one of the options that potentially for the grass, I, I don't know, I can find out if, you know, if they wanted to consider um, an alternative potentially. Um, could I just ask members of the committee then, isn't that the case that we strongly encourage um, to avoid petrol mowers? It certainly is. And Pete had his hand up, so he may have something extra. Uh, well, two comments from me. So the next application in Linton is also asking for a mower, a petrol mower. I think that there aren't, the, from what I understand, there aren't the range of mowers available at the moment other than um, petrol-based yes. but, but cleaner machines. So we, we, I think we can encourage it. I'm not sure we can specify it. Right. Uh, John? Yeah, on, on this particular application, I think we should welcome the fact that they want to overhaul and use their existing mower yeah. rather than buy a new one. And I think yeah. we should take that into account because that in itself is, is more sustainable. Yeah. Okay, I think so then what we're going to be, yeah, as Peter said then really, just to reiterate, is that we don't have the kit on the market at the moment for the commercial electric they've got domestic electric but this is more of a commercial nature in it so right so are we uh how are we feeling with this one uh colleagues we're we going with it yep, yep. so uh, claire is that a thumbs up yes Lovely. it is yeah uh, that's uh, that's a yes then please emma okay thank you um next one on a similar note is the linton village cricket club they are part of the english england and wales cricket board um they were established in 1852. They currently have 80 members. Um, they have five teams, um, different age groups play. Um, the season lasts from April until the beginning of September, and they have games most Saturdays and Wednesdays. Um, the pitch is on the recreation grounds and is owned by the parish council. Um, members, um, they pay £25 per annum, um, and juniors pay £7.50 per annum. Um, Basically, so yes, they, they, they've got two mowers. One is broken and the other is beyond economic repair. And due to the age of them, sourcing parts is getting harder and more expensive. Um, so in, during the cricket, cricket season, a mower is needed several times a week to ensure that the pitch is um, in optimum condition to play on. So this application is again for another petrol mower. Um, it says here that it's specifically designed for cricket pitches. Um, but they would also like to include some attachments, some cartridges um, for different um, surfaces. Um, um, and basically, this obviously would, goes within, without saying it would um, enable the cricket clubs to continue um, and hopefully attract new players. So the total cost is £2,725, of which £1,225 has been requested through us through the community chest. Parish Council are contributing 1,500 and they've applied to the Anderson Trust uh, for match funding but we're, we're still waiting for a response on that one. Um, the Parish Council have already um, helped to purchase a mobile cricket net um, back in 2021. Both um, Kent's councillors Henry and John Batchelor are in support um, and yes, um, yes over to you. Okay, thank you. Colleagues? Could I speak, Joyce? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I really like the fact <clears throat> that the Parish Council have contributed £1,500 and purchased new mobile cricket nets. Um, and I think it's a really good application, actually. It's got enough detail in it, not too much, um, well expressed. Um, yeah, so I'm in favour of it. <clears throat> Lovely. So, can I ask what happens if the Anderson Trust has been... Uh, comes is forthcoming with match funding. Um, will we are we waiting to see whether that happens, or do we say yes and then they will have 
um, additional funds to spare for other things? Um, potentially, they might have additional funds. I need to double check with them. Um, as of today, I've not heard anything about the Anderson Trust um, coming back to them. So potentially we we could fund and then um, obviously review on the Anderson Trust side of things. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Could I, I'm looking at John, but could I, could I say that we put a caveat on this, that yeah. if, if the Anderson Trust do come back and they are uh, generous in their, in their grant funding and amounts, that we deduct that amount from what we've given um, the, the club, yeah? So we, we reduce what we give by whatever they've given so that, you know, we can spread it around. John? Uh, yes, sir. We ha we'll have to do that because obviously we are giving this money for a specific purpose yeah. and therefore um, if if they receive, uh, you know, match funding, then um, by all means they can spend it on something else. But they have to come back to this committee to get our approval so they have to submit a new application um, to, to spend that money on something else um, if they, if they want to submit an application. But that money will have to come back to us because we are giving it for a specific purpose. Fair enough. You got that, Emma? Yeah? Yeah, Thank got you. that. Yeah. Brilliant. So other than that, are we in, we in uh, agreement that it's a yes? Yeah. Thank you. Next one, Emma. Okay. So on page 19, we have Carlton Parish Council. Um, they basically consist um, seven members. They include a zero carbon um, subcommittee, um, litter is proving um, a problem um, by road users um, disposing of ro um, litter on the roadside um, and surrounding areas and um, volunteers are undertaking litter um, picking safely um, initiatives. Um, so basically they need some litter picking um, equipment, which includes um, six litter pickers, six litter bag hoops, six high-vis um, waistcoats of a total cost of £440.09. Um, being a parish council with a very small preset, they are unable to contribute financially. Um, so they're requesting the whole cost of £440.09. Um, and if successful, they will publicise this to the wider community via the magazine, WhatsApp group and Facebook and word of mouth. Um, Councillor Jeff Harvey is in support. Thank you. Members? So. Um, yes, I thought our refuse service would supply all of these uh, provisions if you just ask. So I'm they, reluctant yes, to spend they, money on it. They do, and um, I've actually queried this with them, um, but it's on a loan basis. Um, yes. So I think these this, this particular group, they go out all the time across um, various sort of um, parishes. And so I think it's something that's it's obviously really important to them that they have this. And I don't think it, it actually goes up to the um, six. I don't think it includes all of the equipment potentially. I don't think it, I'm not sure if it includes the hoops, but um, like I say, it's on a loan basis so that they wanted something of their own so they can go out as and when. So the litter pickers are those hand grab things, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, my maths is escaping me, but 289 quid divided by six sounds like a lot mm. per litter picker. I mean, it, do you know, just, I mean, I'm in agreement with you, so I think, Emma, it might be worth, mm. even if we were to fund the purchase of the equipment that we supply on loan, because I'm damn sure we get it for cheaper than 48 quid a pop. Um, and would, you, would it be possible that we could have an extremely long-term loan to this council from us, John? Well, I can only go on what happens in Fallbourne. And in Fallbourne, the litter pick is organised by the Civic Amenity Group, Fallbourne Born. But the equipment that they use is our equipment, which which is kept by the parish council. Yeah. That's so, right. It's the same in Melbourne. Uh, and, and therefore, I, I looked at this and I thought, why, why are they asking us to buy stuff which they can get from this council? And, I, and, I, and they don't, you know... And I'm, I'm hearing that they have, you're supposed to give it back, but to be honest with you, I don't think anybody gives it back. They don't last just keep anyway. it for the, for the next litter pit. They don't last that long. It, it no, well, they're, they're, they're yeah, apart right. from that, they don't last very long. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think we should um, 
John, well, I'm, 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 I'm like you. I, I think that we need to explore whether they, or they need to explore, whether they can get all this equipment from, from us um, and that they are allowed to keep it um, to, to use by the, by the parish council. I'm convinced you won't get the hoops or the high-vis jackets. Well, the hoops, and I'm not sure about the high-vis jackets. You're, you're right on that. But certainly the hoops we've got yeah. in full ball from, oh, okay, right. from us. The high-vis high jackets, I think they have had, we have had high-vis jackets, but I'm not sure where they came from, okay. I have to say. So, but again, they're not very expensive. And I again, you know, working out at over £10 per high-vis well, it's the best, basically. Mm. But you, you can buy them a lot cheaper than that. So I, I really, yeah, I'm, I think this needs to go back. I'm sorry, Emma, but I think you need yeah, no. to go back to them and, and ask some questions about this. Absolutely. That's fine. Yeah. So we, we just back the whole lot, yeah? I think we just we just return the whole lot for defer, defer it. We're, yeah. We're like, yeah. Yeah. Just to confirm, so you said defer, is that a rejection for them to go away and reconsider or is that a deferral to need, come back? They need to come back with some prices and, and do some a bit more, bit okay. more uh, give us some quotes. Because as John says, a high-vis jacket for 10 quid a pop is a lot. And as you, you rightly said, £48 for a, a little picking device is extremely high. So, so we, can, we can service those through, through our waste disposal people, as Sue said. The hoops can go there from waste disposal people and they can have a very long-term loan. There you go. So it kind of makes sense, really. They're doing our work as well, so it's fantastic. So, Right, OK, so that one is a semi-deferral refusal, however you want to take that one. Um, go away, please return with further information. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, okay. Right. Um, on page 20, we have So Positive. Um, this is a char charity from Hazling Field. Um, it was set up in response to the COVID-19 pandemic um, as a voluntary initiative called Community Masks for NHS, which made over 13,000 fabric masks for community use. Um, they raised over £40,000 for the NHS charities together. Um, the initiative includes over volunt um, 50 volunteers who include students, people working full time, retirees, shielding individuals and people with no sewing skills. It has also brought with it mental health and social inclusion benefits. Um, so positive um, sort of was formed then in December 2020. Um, they received community chest funding of £1,000 back in March 2021 um, for their startup costs. Um, so there's a number of benefits here, um, obviously including social um, cohesion, supporting social inclusion and positive mental health, as I've said. Um, and the project that they would like to do is to um, provide community workshops to support well-being through sewing, upcycling, using sustainable projects uh, for textile use and giving basic sewing skills to communities. And their plan, are, plan is to hold five workshops, which will take place over the year. Um, and they will open up to individuals from any parish in the district. Um, the locations will be in South Cambridgeshire villages and also city locations. Um, so the online workshops um, will be available as well if needed, but um, obviously those will be more flexible on the numbers. Total project cost is £3,000. Of this, um, 1800 is requested through the community chest to pay for their setup costs and materials to support the workshops and their charity. So this includes um, public liability insurance, just giving fees, Zoom licenses, face-to-face um, -face workshop, hire of venues and fees and materials and fabrics. Um, the remaining 1,200 to deliver the workshops and community events has been applied to from the Cole Charitable Trust. Um, the outcome of this will be determined at the end of May. Um, and methods of, um, to advertise the scheme have included leafleting in public spaces, um, community centres, libraries, public notice boards. Um, so um, Councillor Ian Solemn is very happy to support so positive application. Um, so yes, it's 1,800 that they are requesting. Brilliant. Sue? Well, I very much support the sentiment of, of this whole charity and the uh, 
I do believe that it has a real therapeutic <coughs> opportunity for individuals. My only concern is £960 for fabrics and materials. Now, I have a quilting group of 12 of us, and we each said the other week that if we'd sewed every day for the next, until we were 150, we would not have used all the fabric we have in our cupboards. And fabric is very much available from older people like myself who die and, and relatives have a real job in getting rid of, of that sort of thing. So there's an element there of, of feeling that there is op opportunity to recycle quite a lot of material. I'm sure I could keep this group going for a, a whole year just out of my stash. So, just a thought. Claire, you've got your hand up. Yes, I, um, I, I, I agree with Sue on that. Um, but also, I was just query, should we be providing £216 for just giving fees? I mean, I'm not... I'm not against supporting Sue Positive, but I, I'm just wondering about what we're being asked for here specifically. Like, it's just a question to other members of the committee. Well, I'm looking at I'm looking at John, seeing he's the lead member for finance. But I mean, other than Sue's comments about material, John, and I think we can probably encourage through Emma that yeah, they perhaps want to make a, an appeal for material, my view, to keep them going in the future. But the 216 is the one that Claire has raised for the just giving fees. Pete, first. Um, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, there may be a question around the, the 216 we, we can clarify. But, but overall, um, given that, you know, it's just over half that they're applying for of the total funds that are required, then... I, I don't have a problem with it. I, I think it's fine to ask clarification on the 216. Yeah. I think I think we're probably all in agreement on that, just the 216. So, John, what's your opinion on the 216? Well, well, I think this is a super scheme, and I think we should be supporting it. Um, to, to be honest, I don't have an issue over the £216, but um, if, if, you're, if you think that we ought to look further into that, that's fine. But I, I'm quite happy with this. I don't think it was whether we were unhappy with it, whether or not it was, if you want to call it in inverted commas, lawful as far as our scheme is concerned. But actually, that 2116 would generate a whole shed load more money. So it's probably an investment in the long run. So if we're all in agreement, Claire, are you in agreement? Yeah, no, I'm happy with that. I, I Just hearing, as I said, I wanted to hear what other people say. No. So I'm happy with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. In that case, that's an approval. Um, next one, please, Emma. OK, page 21, we have Over Day Centre, a charitable incorporated organisation. Um, it's been running since 1989. It provides professional care and friendship for older people in over and adjoining villages. There's currently 35 members each of which pay £23 per day. Transport is provided either by their families, the day centre minibus or the OWLS driving scheme. The day centre is various, experiencing various challenges since it closed in March 2020 due to COVID-19. So with its closure, um, contributions from funding and support um, allowed the centre just to cover continuing overheads and revenue costs. And the day centre was able to reopen, but only at certain times um, in April 2021. But it still faces the challenge of continued advice to follow a two metre social distancing rule. This has meant that the client capacity is now half. So it's 15 as opposed to 30 of what it was before the pandemic. And loss of client income obviously has meant that the centre is now drawing upon reserves to remain open. Trustees, staff and volunteers held two um, fundraising events last year. Um, the five pub challenge walk and bike rides, both which were very well attended, um, but numbers were with these events still down compared to the previous years. So they, um, because they couldn't hold them in the summer, obviously summer would draw in more, more, more people coming along to them. Um, after these events, trustees estimated that the, the call on reserves to remain open could be around 33,000 pounds by the end of this financial year. Um, 
but the asset management lead officer at Cambridgeshire County Council has advised that if two CO2 monitors were installed, the day centre could be safely um, open to increase the number of client numbers um, at any session to 25 clients, um, up from 15 clients. Um, they're also planning a campaign um, to increase um, client interest and numbers as well um, with social prescribers, the use of social media to reach carers um, and distributing leaflets and posters. So in total, they would like um, a grant of £883.20, including VAT, um, for both CO2 monitors and leaflet and poster distribution. Um, they've not approached the parish council for help as, as they also um, they already provided a grant of five thousand um, pounds back in June twenty twenty one, so it's the full cost of eight hundred and eighty three pounds twenty. Thank you, very much. right? Now this, if I, correct me if I'm wrong. This, we had this one. This has come back again, isn't it? No, I think we we had queried it. Um, queried it, right? Okay. We had I know I've not seen it before. No. I mean, this is highly important with the mental health side of it, I think, with uh, older citizens. Uh, John, you want to say something? Yeah, thank you. I, I mean, given, given the amount they want, I'm not, uh, I'm not too bothered about this, but I am bothered by what I read about the way that this is being run and the financial sustainability of the place. I mean, I, it says here that they, knew they need two CO2 monitors to enable... Um, the increase the client number to 25. Presumably, they can't they can't go over um, limit of 15. And yet, elsewhere, they're saying that the client capacity is now half 15 as opposed to 30. Well, it wouldn't it couldn't have been 30 because they didn't have, haven't got the CO2 monitors to permit them to do that. I think that so was I, um, well, that was pre COVID. I think. Yeah. It, 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 the CO two monitors. So so that's pre COVID. So they yeah. so even with the two CO two monitors, they still won't get back to thirty, which presumably is is their business plan, that they need thirty clients to to be solvent, and yet they won't get thirty clients. They'll only be able to get twenty five. So I need to understand. I mean, as I say, it's, it's such a small amount of money. Let, let's give it to them. Let, let's help them. But they really need to go and start and seriously start looking at their future business plan. Because if it's based on 30 clients, they can't have 30 clients. They can only have 25. And so, you know... Let's say they, they need to. I, I'm, I'm not sure this will survive, to be honest, but I'm happy to help them in the meantime. But they really do need to get their heads around the figures. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I mean, the, the, the fact that the county council are involved, if you will, with, with, with advice and what have you for the CO2 monitors and what have you, I think is because of the. It must be the adult social care um, department of some description. You, would you agree, Emma? I this is, think this is, so. This is, sen this is senior citizens, isn't it? Mm, that are being yeah. looked, uh, looked after at a day centre or vulnerable individuals. So I mean, oh, imagine that's also, why they, they want the, uh, the CO2 monitors and why they do. And they're also at a discounted price as well. Yeah. Um, Okay, look, well, the, the, if the lead member for finance is okay with this one, um, I am. Uh, colleagues, I'm looking around the room, yeah, Claire? We're okay, yeah. But as, as, as John says, Emma, would you, would you be tactful and, and ask them how they are going to survive in the next coming months, say for the rest of this year while we're on slightly reduced numbers everywhere while we're coming out of the COVID issues. Of course. Thank you very much. Okay. Right, so on to the next one, page 22. We have Fendrayton Village Hall Management Committee. Um, they consist of nine members who manage the, the Village Hall. Um, it's been in use since 1938, so it's used by various local groups, um, including the Beavers, Cubs, local leisure classes and a community cafe. Income is derived solely from hall hire, um, including private hire for parties and through grants. 
So recent remedial work carried out on the roof of the village hall discovered that the guttering and downpipes were leaking. And to mend this would prove difficult because of the imperial fittings that had been used because of the age of the building. And the building trade now only used the metric equivalents. And they've made some sort of um, patch up sort of repairs in the past, um, but they seem to be unsatisfactory due to this issue. So basically the application is to replace all of the guttering and downpipes um, to ensure that the fabric of the building is secure and no longer in danger of developing damp problems and to ensure the safety of the um, hall for users. So the total project cost is estimated to be £2,388, of which the full £2,000 has been requested through the community chest. And broken down, this would be seven days labour of £200 a day, materials, which will be £730, and skip hire. Um, so, um, Councillor Sue Ellington, Ellington you're, you're in support of this application. Um, and on the 24th of this month, sorry, yesterday, the Parish Council has agreed to donate £250 towards, towards the costs. Um, yeah, over to you. Thank you. Sue, do you want to go first on this then, Joel? Well, really, I've said um, it, it, it's a well-used building and this, I believe, is good use of our resources um, and they really do struggle to uh, manage to, to keep the building in good state of repair. It, it's like this. It's got a very high roof because it used to be a... Um, tennis court, squash court, and so it's not what you might call very friendly Could and homely, but okay. they struggle and they make it work. That's, that's lovely. Uh, John, you want to say something? Yeah, just can I ask Sue, um, is, is it in a conservation area or listed? No, it's not. No. Okay, that's great. Okay, thank you. That's no. Good. Okay, uh, colleagues, Peter, Claire, Pete, yeah? No yes, I'm, okay. yeah, I'm happy uh, with this. As am I, so that's lovely. Thank you very much, Emma. That's another one. Okay, thank you. Um, so page 23, we have Camborne Town Football Club. Um, landowner, so the actual um, football ground is owned by the landowner of the Parish Council. Um, it was recently formed in June 2021, which has brought together the five large clubs in Camborne. So it's quite a big football team. Um, it's offered to men, women and children of all age groups um, um, as one clear progression sort of path club. Um, it's now the biggest in Cambridgeshire, actually. So it consists of 45 teams, 700 players and 110 coaches. Um, and most of the teams are for children. Um, um, but there's also Send Football as well. And other initiatives are also being provided. Um, and what they're finding is that with so many games played each week, um, they've looked into um, new approaches to maximise the number of games that can be played on the pitches. And the current goals are old and bent and can only accommodate one size of pitch. But if they're replaced with the new roller goals, you can see the picture there. And these, these goals can be moved around and it's a, it makes it a lot easier for um, configuring the football pitches for all the matches that they want to play. Um, so what they're looking for is the... Um, is a um, total applied for £1,958.33. And that would be um, for goals. Um, they've got a sort of kind of like set plan, basically, of um, providing goals in the priority order in the table that you can see there. Um, they also made applications to um, Green King Proud to Pitch of £3,000 grassroots football of £2,000 and they're just waiting on some decisions on those ones but that will be for the further the further goalposts as well. Um, the £5,000 has also been raised from the, um, the football club themselves and also the town council who are the landowners. Um, they've employed um, also a football officer, brought containers, created storage pens for the girls and have financially and physically supported the club since it started so they're very much in support. Um, so yes, it would be two goals um, for one set, as shown in the picture. Thanks, Emma. Did you say um, Campbell and Town Council have put in five k? Um, they've raised the money, yes, uh, well, from the football club and the town council. It says on, on, on the um, bottom okay. paragraph. Okay, just a question: Do you know if Campbell have got an all-weather pitch, like a three G or four G pitch? 
Not entirely. Don't, I don't believe so, but... Um... This, is, this is very pertinent, actually. It might be worth mentioning this, that um, the FA Football Association across the land are having over a five or six year period a campaign to put in 100 per year, if I'm correct, 100 per year, 4G pitches or 3G pitches. Melbourne has just taken ownership of its one. They are on, on average around about a million, give or take, to put in. Um, the FA pay at the start, the start of the project half. So all you need to do is fund the other half. But then if there are measures that you can put in, such as 106s and other bits and pieces, they tend to, as in Melbourne's case, they paid the majority, nearly the 800,000 of that million. So it was, it's a heck of a, an investment, but it also takes out the grass pitch side of it and you have 365 ability to play. So it may be worth them making an approach if they've got football teams in Camborne and the parish to make the approach to the FA because it's worth a gold mine. Okay, so anybody else got some comments on this? Claire, Pete, Sue? Yeah, we're, we're okay with it? Yep. Claire? Yes, yeah. Yep, yeah, we're okay, thank you very much. That's another one, thanks, Emma. Okay, so that's, that's Camborne. Um, page 25, we've got some Gambling Gay Baptist Church who um, are a part of the Baptist Union of Great Britain. Um, the church dates back to 1670 and runs many community outreach projects, which includes the Backroom Cafe and the Gambling Game Food Project. Um, currently, there are about up to 100 members, actually, so um, it's quite, it serves quite a lot of people. The Backroom Cafe is a community cafe which serves artisan coffees, teas and homemade cakes every Monday and third Sunday of the month. Um, it creates a welcoming space to between 60 and 100 people. Um, a day, um, regular visitors coming from Gambling Gate and the surrounding areas. And in addition, the cafe is a portable, having previously set up in other parts of the community for special occasions. Um, at the moment, they use two home espresso machines, which serve 60 to 100 drinks a day. But these machines are pretty much overworked and struggling to keep up with demand. Um, so funding of £2,000 is requested as a contribution towards the 6700 required for a commercial um, coffee machine, grinder and extras. And if you look at the, um, the breakdowns, we've got a coffee machine, the grinder with various um, decaffeinated grinders and various options and boxes and things that I'm not sure, and two times tampers. I'm not sure what, I think, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but it's all part of it that um, obviously um, something that would help provide these artisan coffees. Um, the, one of the quotes includes the cost of a second-hand grinder. So they're looking into sort of obviously second-hand options as well. Um, compact second-hand coffee machines are harder to obtain. Um, so, and also unfortunately, larger size machines would be too big for the space that they've got available. So the quote that they've given is um, for 6,700 total costs of which you know, we would contribute. Councillor Bridget Smith um, is very much in support as well. Um, and the parish council in support as well. And um, they've also agreed at their parish council meeting um, that they're in support, but they cannot um, support financially at this time. So, so the parish council are supportive. Okay, I shall start. As I believe the only fully trained barista in the room, <laughs> I know exactly what they're talking about. You do know what they're talking about. So, <laughs> you know what uh, Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have a problem with this. It's, this is this is perfect. It, it's, it's doing what it says on the team with a number of people as well, and obviously the community and mental well well being. Anybody else got any other points? I can actually say I can do your lovely latte or cappuccino, right? If you want a mocha, I am pretty happy to dab out of that as well. <laughs> it sounds like a very good place to go for coffee and cake. Yeah, but I was actually talking more about Melbourne Hub than this place, but hey, what the heck. <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd get that in there at some point. Right, yeah. Okay, thanks. So we're all in agreement, are we? Yes. Thank you very much. That's another one, Emma. Off Thank your list. You. Okay, so page 26, we have the Bolsham 1617 map project. 
So um, this was formed in 2013 with the aim of publishing a book which covers 400 years of the history of Bolsham. Um, this was successfully achieved in 2017 and Bolsham, a village story, 1617 to 27, 2017, was given to every household um, in the village. So currently there's eight members in the group and to complement this book, they would like to um, purchase and install two lectern style map display boards as shown in the picture. Um, and one of the maps, one board will be a replica of the earliest map of Bolsham. Um, and then the adjoining map um, will show the village as it is now highlighting the historical buildings, public footpaths and byways. Um, and also it wants to sort of tie in as a sort of lasting commemoration of the Platinum Jubilee as well. Um, they will be on parish council owned land close to a public footpath in the centre of the village so they can be viewed quite easily. Um, the total cost of this project is 3,250 and of this a thousand pounds is being requested through the community chest. Um, the parish council have agreed to donate a thousand pounds and then the, the remaining 1,250 will come from the Bolsham map group book sales um, which you can see all the breakdowns of the costings there. Um, Councillor Jeff Harvey is, um, is saying that he has no hesitation in recommending this new project um, for community chest support. So, um, over to you. Comments, colleagues? Sounds like a good project to me. Um, I think it's a great idea to make the 1617 map available and, and, and also to uh, put the history of the village uh, out there in the open. I'm, I'm very supportive of this. Okay. Yeah. Our historic villages need to be highlighted, given the amount of new houses that are going in all around, and we need to look after them and cherish them. So, yes, I support it. I wonder if this isn't a model for other villages as well. Um, it seems a very worthwhile project. Yeah. And um, the way they've gone about it and all the detail, maybe they could, we, we could share with other parishes as well. That's uh, something, I know that as, uh, Peter just said, well, actually, we'll ask them actually whether they'd be willing to share their, their uh, format, so to speak, and what they've done. Definitely, maybe potentially to speak at a workshop that you know we could always yeah, ask them. Point to of reference and what have you? That's lovely. Yeah, we can do a case study as well. I'm looking, at, I'm looking around the room. I don't find any objections, so um, mm. we'll take that as a, a yes again. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely. Okay, page twenty-eight. We've got um, an organisation, a charity, an organisation called Shed It. Um, so basically, it's a men's shed set up in 2018 to provide practical community activities to promote social inclusion and well-being. There's currently 20 members, each pay a £1 subscription, so it's quite cheap. Um, the Swavesy Sustainability Hub will be launched um, by Shedit at a planned um, for a weekend in June 2022. The fair will be open to everybody in the village and surrounding areas and called Re-Imaging the Future. And it will start new projects, including a repair cafe and a clothes swap, as well as support existing community facilities, including the orchard and allotments. And the weekend they've got um, will feature wildlife walks, beekeeping talks, um, vegan food tasting, mucky kid activities, community feasts and a um, citizen science data collection. Um, a map of the village is being painted by a local artist who will describe the activities and once designed, the printed map will be delivered to every house in the village. Um, and there will also be wildlife stickers, um, which children and young people can get as a prize for increasing biodiversity in their gardens. Um, and this will also promote the hub and the fair and engage all of the community. So the total project cost for this one is 1,314, which is a change to the published um, reports that you have so it's 71 pounds cheaper because they've got their firm quotes that have come through the firm invoice so basically this would be um publicity leaflets design poster printing window stickers tool hire and uh, materials craft and kitchen materials a website domain and maintenance um the land where the fair will take place is owned by the george long charity and the parish council have previously contributed 90 pounds to shed it Swavesy Parish Council are in support and have also provided funding to cover the cost of hiring the memorial hall, hall for the weekend. 
and Councillor Sue Ellington, you are in support. And um, yes, um, please, any comments? Thank you, Sue. Well, Shelley was excellent. And I managed, it, it's basically men in sheds. Um, and I managed to get uh, a, a, a garage of one of my friends where they could all meet and they did so much good stuff. But unfortunately, my friend had Alzheimer's and is currently had to move out and therefore they had to move out. But the charity remains and the members remain and it, it really has been good for them and for the village. And if only I could find another barn for them to have as their home, it would be great. But they are planning to move on to the next stage and have a um, mobile home or something of that no nature to become their base when they've in, um, run this weekend and you know, recruited more people. And so it, it really is, I think, a sustainability hub in Swavesey is just a dream that we all should support. Um, my question was actually about the sustainability of the sustainability hub and I think Sue has answered it. It does sound very good and <clears throat> what they're going to do in June 22 sounds imaginative but um, for how long are they going to last? I think that's what I'm wondering about but I think Sue's answered that if they're looking for a mobile home and um, planning for the future. Thanks. Um, no, I agree with the comments made made already, and um, you know they they put quite a lot of thought into this, so um, it looks looks pretty good. I'm I'm very much in favour of this. Uh, John, you okay with this? I think these are, these are wonderful wonderful things. Actually, you often see these things publicised on television with sherry, apparently. Really? Apparently, sherry. You have sherry in a shed. Oh, do you? Yeah. So. Not that I'm advocating drinking sherry during the day, of course, but apparently sherry is meant to be one of the pastimes with coffee. <laughs> okay, in that case, that's an approval. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Okay, so we're now on to the Queen's Platinum Jubilee applications, and you can see the map which shows the applications that we've received from which parishes. Um, so I'll go on to the first one on page 29, which is the Gamling Gay Community Centre. Um, uh, oh, Chair, could before um, Emma starts, could I just ask a question, a, a question of clarification, please? Um, am I correct in thinking that um, in the instructions that went out, they were the funding was for a permanent objects, not for um, cakes and bunting on the day? Is that am I correct in that? Something with a lasting legacy, um, but not one-off events. Yes. Yeah, OK, good, thanks. OK, um, so Gamling Gay Community Centre um, was set up in August 2010. It's an eco-friendly community facility offering a wide range of commun community and recreational activities for the people of Gamling Gay and surrounding areas. Um, it's owned by the Parish Council and it provides facilities in the interest of social welfare, recreation and leisure time and is used by people of all ages and levels of ability and disability. So this application is to create a wildflower area on the mound by the recreation area at the rear of the Eco Hub building. Um, and this is a well used um, area by the public and will be seen and appreciated by all who walk past as well. And they are requesting £643, which is the total project cost, to remove the sort of scrub plants that are growing there at the moment. Um, and they're quite overgrown, as we can see. And um, they would like to re replant with a suitable wildflower mix. Um, the colours of red, white and blue um, will be used to reflect the Queen's Jubilee with other coloured um, wildflowers to be added in the future. And they would also like to prepare and reseed a few other well-used grassy areas that are worn down around the hub. Um, and the, the above cost includes labour and the removal of all the green waste by a local company. So that's £643. 
it looks like they've got a significant project for this this project. You know, the whole the whole event's cost in twenty k, and and then for the the celebration maybe. So I can't see six hundred could be a problem. So my only question is, we seem to have two applications from the same parish council, and did we not state that it was uh, seven hundred pounds per? This um, village, yeah. basically. The, the second one is a um, jubilee committee, which aren't, um, they're an unincorporated association. Um, and if they were successful, because they're the, under the umbrella of the, um, the Gamlingay Community Centre, the funds would go to them, but it would be, they are a separate organisation as such, because they're a jubilee committee. So, but they are both in Gamlingay, that's correct, yes. So I was under the impression that any groups within a community could make an application as well as the parish. Yeah. Yeah. Now the parish council or other groups could also make an application to the community yeah. chest for a community chest payment. So you take essentially you could go to seven twenty seven hundred if you were successful. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do we feel? Claire, Peter, John? Um, Everyone looks I'm happy. happy with the yeah. I'm happy with the first one for gambling age. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The six hundred pound one. Yeah. Yeah. Six sixty-seven yeah. fifty-seven. Yeah. Okay, doke. Six four three. Six four three. Six four three. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I'm on page thirty. Sorry, wrong side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is the. Sorry, that, uh, that was okay, that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, on to the next one, page 30, we have the um, Jubilee Committee that I just mentioned. Um, they were set up on the 24th of January, and they consist of three resident volunteers wanting to organise a celebration for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And that will be on, obviously on Saturday, the 4th of June. Um, the celebration will be in two parts. So they will have self-organised afternoon parties where residents and community groups will be encouraged to have their own neighbourhood parties. Um, and that will be on the sort of common ground areas. And then also there will be a free communal evening gathering in the recreation field behind the Eco Hub for a screening of the Queen's concert from the palace. So to support the neighbourhood parties, souvenir activity packs will be given out, which include recipes, games, a quiz, treasure hunt, treasure hunts, tips, and how to make your party more environmentally friendly, stories, history of the past gambling gay jubilees, paper crowns, and old photos for residents who want them. And then the children will contribute to these packs um, as well, local community groups, so the schools, churches, youth club, history society will be involved. Um, and then on the outside of the folder, there'll be a specially designed picture. So that will be a result of a um, competition that will go to the children in the village. Um, and the committee will be responsible for producing and printing the activity packs. Um, the committee also support and coordinate the activities of the other community groups, either on the day itself or holding a fundraising event for one of the Queen's charities later. So the events will be advertised by flyers, posters, banners, word of mouth, in the hope that at least half of the village will take place um, take part in some way. The total project cost is around £20,000 of which £667.57 has been requested to produce 500 activity packs and the remaining amount is hoped to be raised through sponsorship from local businesses. The Parish Council agreed to contribute £2,000 for the security at the event. Um, Councillor Bridget Smith um, has said that as a local member of Gamlingay, she is very pleased to support the application. So, um, yes, over to you. Claire. I suppose my question is, what is the permanent memorial from this? <clears throat> this? This will be the activity packs, which will be a lasting legacy that people can keep, and it will include pictures and, um, as I've mentioned already, um, recipes and all the sort of crowns and um, stories and history of the past. So it's a sort of lasting legacy that people can keep. So, OK, so it's the folder. It's the folder with all the activity things in it, yes. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm less sure, but I'm happy to hear other people speak. Well, we didn't we didn't specify it had to be a bench or, or a plaque. It just had to be something that was available thereafter. So, 
Peter? Yeah, Sue? I'm not really very happy about it because I do feel that things like um, uh, envelopes, packs of those sort of things uh, are not necessarily kept uh, in memorial. But I'll go with the committee. John? Uh, thanks. I, I was waiting to hear what the committee felt about this because I have to say I can't see how an activity pack fits our criteria. Um, I could understand if it was um, if it if it was a souvenir, um, it contained a souvenir uh, such as a medallion or or something to commemorate the. But it doesn't do that. It's it suggests it's a pact to help people celebrate the Jubilee, which isn't, it doesn't really meet our criteria. I'm sorry, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm struggling with this. I wanted to hear what other people thought and whether they, they also, you know, whether they also felt that an activity pact was what met, met the, what we were asking for. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to see how a pact with party stuff in actually meets that criteria. Okay, well, I'm going to take the, the feeling from the committee, which is one of struggling. And so what I would like, if it's okay with you, Emma, to go back to this group and ask them if they are going to perhaps swap out or replace or even add to their breakdown of what the folder contains, that there may be something in there which we would constitute as a permanent reminder. It could be a medallion, it could be whatever a coin or whatever, as supplied by the the uh, Crown's office, I think is one of those areas, or, or anything the Majesty if they want to do, but uh, are they going to do something like that? Because as, as everyone has said here, more or less, most of this will probably end up in the recycling at some point. Mm -hmm. So that isn't what we're about. I know it's only a small sum of money compared to their whole project cost, but it's principle, I suppose, if you want to put it like that. So they've got plenty of time to go back and come back again. Yeah? Yep. yep. Thanks. Okay. okay. So, are we happy to go into the next one? Yes, please. Hardwick. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. Yeah, page 32. Hardwick Parish Council. Um, they would like to mark the Queen's Jubilee by planting some trees on the recreation grounds, along with a Jubilee plaque. Um, they're also organising some social events and um, installation of something within the village to remember the events. Um, they've mentioned that the village has grown in size with the construction of two new recent developments um, and that there's a lack of good outdoor notice boards to communicate information to residents. And the parish council have obtained a quote for a commemorative notice board composed of recyclable material. Total cost is £1,088.88. And there's a notice board, um, um, basically includes delivery, installation and a plaque. Total cost of £700 is requested and the parish council have indicated that it may pay the difference if, the, um, if, if it's successful with the community chest um, committee today. So yeah, £700. Thank you. Who would like to go yeah, I'm in favour of this. I think a decent notice board is really important. And um, if it can be made and placed there as part of the Jubilee celebrations, I think it's a good idea. And I think they really need to have enough funds to buy a decent one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm getting nods from my two colleagues and the lead member for finance. That's a yes, please, then. Thank you. OK, just bear with me. Go on to the next one, which Shelford. is Great Shelford on page 33. So um, this is a parish council consisting of 12 members um, and they would like to install a commemorative bench on the recreation ground. Um, over the past few years, the parish council's worked with local community to ensure that this open space is truly available for all residents and a haven for peace, tranquility and wildlife um, and it's not just a space for sports users. And this bench would form that they would like um, 
part of the master plan to reimagine the recreation grounds. They want to put it by the river um, near an area of wildflowers and a small, um, sorry, not corpse, corpse. corpse. I do, do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to put no, corpse yeah. in there. Yes, corpse. <laughs> the bench um, will be made of recyclable materials um, available for all members of the public free of charge. The total cost, including the bench, anchoring kits, tamper resistant fixing covers and a memorial plaque is £983.17, including VAT. £700 is being requested through the Community Chest Grant and the Parish Council have confirmed that they will pay the difference as well as all the labour costs. Councillor Nick Sample um, is in support. Chair, could I just, could I ask a question, please? Absolutely, please do. Um, OK, so we, we'll get it. We've got more benches to come um, and notice boards and things. Are we, are people going to, are communities going to put little plaques on these saying that they were provided uh, for the Platinum Jubilee? And I mean, in a way, sort of, as a historian, I suppose, I would quite like it that we urged that to happen so that we know so that in the future people know when these things were put in place and why. Well, and that's that, what we're giving the money mean, for, isn't it? Do you mean I'd it? have to find it was funded by us? Sorry? Part, do you mean that they were part funded by us or the fact that... Yeah, yeah, so we part funded by South Camps District Council in 2020, in the Jubilee, Platinum Jubilee year 2022. I, yeah. You know, I just think it'd be good to do that. Uh, uh, yeah, Peter. Um, yeah, I had a similar comment, and I made the comment to a number of my parishes that, that um, it is a commemorative bench, so I'm kind of assuming they'll commemorate the, the Jubilee and that they got a grant from South Cam, so I think, I think that's only fair. Absolutely. So, yeah. I thought that was our policy, that anything we gave right. like that yeah. uh, should have a... If we can we can um, confirm that just so they can you know agree to that when we send out the um, email. So that's not a problem. Yeah, you do that to all of them, yeah. We do it anyway, yeah. but we can we can emphasize yeah, more. Okay, uh, John, you got any comments? No, no that's a that's a yes then. Okay, so um, page thirty-four, then Drayton Parish Council. Um, they consist of nine members. This is um, to purchase 10 cherry trees to form a glade to commemorate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. This um, glade is in a parish council owned field, which is accessible at all times um, for residents and um, visitors alike. Um, funding requested uh, from the community chest is £427, which covers obviously the trees, stakes and ties. They've got a village handyman who will plant the trees and help. Um, they've got a volunteer villager as well who's a professional ar arboral, I can't pronounce that, oh, arboral culturalist. Um, and the trees are quite small. The garden centre has um, informed um, the, the parish council chair and they will be easy to plant and they are bare rooted and in pots. There's a nearby water supply so the trees can be well watered if the weather is dry. Um, Councillor Sue Ellington, you are entirely supportive of this, um, and that's £427 for the cherry trees. Thank you, Emma. What was that professional again? <laughs> <laughs> right, um, sorry. <laughs> <coughs> well, Fendrayton, having uh, its roots very firmly in um, horticulture, and, and uh, they really do enjoy their green spaces and I would support this. And they will look after it. They won't let it die. Brilliant. Yeah. No, 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 don't let it. Yeah. I'm going to give it to hey. you. <laughs> Peter. Yes, I think I know what Sue is talking about. Um, yeah. the, the, the cherry trees can be a bit thirsty, but I'm sure they'll take care of it. Claire? Yeah, I'm happy with this. Yeah. Okay. That's a yes from us then, please, Emma. Okay, the next Thank one you. is Wadden, Wadden Parish Council. Um, this would be another bench um, installation in a central position by the village hall overlooking the recreation grounds. Um, Wadden Recreation Ground attracts many visitors from the surrounding area due to its large playground, regular fixtures and dog training sessions on the green. Um, the bench will be inscribed with a tribute to the Queen and used by all, hopefully. 
Um, so again, that, that, that could be something that we could um, obviously we emphasize about SCDC funding. Um, so the, the bench cost is 622, sorry, 620 pounds, including VAT, and then installing the bench on a concrete ba ben, um, base is 150 pounds. The parish council have confirmed that they will pay the difference if they were awarded 700 pounds from the community chest. Councillors um, Sally Ann Hart and yourself, um, Councillor Hales, you're in support. Certainly are. I know exactly where it's going. It's a lovely little spot. So that's, uh, I, can't, I can't endorse it enough, as you can see. And my colleague, Sally Ann Hart, is exactly the same. So over to um, you. Chair, yeah. can I just make a general comment? Um, companies will be doing very well out of benches this year, I think. <laughs> and I just note that um, there's very different prices for the benches. I'm presuming that that's because they're some are smaller and some are bigger. I just don't know whether, you know, it's just, um, it's noticeable that there's a huge variety in cost. I suppose the good, the good levelling thing is they can only get 700 quid, so they can spend what they like. But yeah, they get yeah. 700 quid for money. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, they can, yeah, can have bells on if you like and lights. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter, so anything to say? No. no. Okay, that's a yes, please, Emma. Okay. Okay, on to the next one, page 35, which is Willingham Parish Council. Um, they consist of 15 members, and they would, again, like to purchase a Jubilee bench. Um, the Parish Council have worked hard over recent years to improve facilities by way of adding equipment trees, seating, and soon to be completed wildflower planting. So a bench will enhance the existing provision for members of the public to enjoy this um, ever increasingly popular facility. The park is open all of the time and is it's very accessible to residents from neighbouring villages as well. And this bench is a stainless steel bench which um, obviously, as you can see, the, the price is reflected, the fact it's stainless steel, a little bit more expensive, um, probably about £1,614, and they're requesting £700 for the community chest. And you can see the picture of what they are hoping to have um, put onto, the, inscribed onto the, onto the bench. Um, delivery as well is included in this one, and a kit to secure it as well. Um, and also... Um, They've, they've just made a little note that a lot of the seating purchased by the parish council is recycled composite material or wood. But in this case, that they wanted to include the stainless steel bespoke bench because it was more fitting, they believed. And that's £700 that they would request. Thank you. Comments, colleagues? Fine, fine by me. Yeah, I think I'm looking around the room here and everyone's nodding as well. I'm very happy. I like the idea of having one that's really bespoke and probably made by a local blacksmith. It does look really nice, actually, with the design, doesn't it? That's good. OK, that's a, another yes, then. Thank you. OK, so that, that comes to the end of the actual applications that we've got. We have got a, um, a request for a funding exchange on page 37. So this is from High Friends of Histon and Impington Community. Um, they were funded uh, COVID recovery funding of £1,400 back in May 2021. The, um, the initial intention was to restart specialist exercise classes and to add a specialist exercise classes dedicated to those living with long term COVID. Um, but after publicising, um, attendance was pretty low. Um, activity was paused while progress was evaluated and relaunched in October, but still with no success. Um, six sessions have already been provided at a cost of £170.10, um, being the cost of the instructor. And the net amount of £1,229.90 remaining, the group have asked if there's any other um, suitable COVID recovery projects that the, the funds could be used for. And they've given us three um, options as an alternative. So the first one would be a... Um, something to support some um, parents, um, basically several parent online support sessions um, were provided in February and March of 2021. And they attracted locals, um, around 50 village parents. Follow-up support has not um, taken place since. And there's a general feeling that many, many parents still have many concerns. This project would use um, a community play therapist to deliver three in-person workshops in the summer term. Um, specifically for parents covering anger, anxiety and the building up of self-esteem in children. 
and that would cost around £300, which includes venue charge and workshop um, leader fees. The second project is a village mental health event. Um, so in Gen January 2021, iPhones delivered an online community mental health event, which was attended by 20 people and featured a compelling talk by Tony Sigrist from Talking for Ely. Um, and this project is for an all person, um, all in person event at the end of March to include three speakers, um, Tony himself, um, a, also a local mental health professional who will present tips and tools to manage feeling overwhelmed in the new working world. And also the community play therapist who will present about managing family COVID anxiety. And that would again would be around £300, including venue hire. And the third option is a new specialist exercise class. Um, currently, they, they, they organise an exercise class on a Monday for older people and those recovering from strokes. Um, and this class uses specialist instructors from the Ely based charity called Posability, but it's nearing its maximum capacity. So the remaining funds would allow for a second specialist class to be set up with an initial three month period, but this time for those living with Parkinson's disease. Um, so that, that the total project cost at the moment um, is £1,229.90 um, or less, depending on the options. Um, so there's three projects to consider there. Um, yes, so thoughts, please. Right, so they've got this 1400 quid left. Well, they've got they a grant fund and they've got 1229 so these these three projects aren't um, one or the other. They're actually all three of them. Is it? You could, yeah. There. Or if you wanted, you know, depending on what you thought. I mean, you've got three cracking little projects, really. Mm. I think I don't have a problem with this at all. I don't know about uh, colleagues. So lead member for finance doesn't. So Claire, Pete, Sue. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, one of the most interesting sets of. Um, plans and uh, especially COVID follow-up. So I'd be very interested in, in the outcome and whether this is relevant also for some other parishes later on. Yeah. Claire? Yeah, I, I feel exactly the same. I think it would be really good to see how these go and whether or not, <clears throat> and if they are very successful, then whether or not they can be, um, this kind of thing can be adopted in other places. Um, I think the <clears throat> it's a good, it's, the three taken together are a good range of events. Well, wow, wow. so yeah, very much in favour. Very much in favour. I think uh, they could be a pilot for all sorts of other projects in our district. In that case, Emma, that's a, a yes from us. But would you like? To, uh, could you uh, compliment the the team who brought this forward to you as the of course the Senate, and say thank you very much. The three, the three projects they're talking about are innovative and yep. that we are very impressed and that we would be very grateful if they could give us a, a, a breakdown at the end of their, their projects or as they go along as normal. But with special attention to this because we see these as things that could be rolled out elsewhere. Yeah, and I think they might be another one for a workshop potentially if, the, if this is something that they would like to sort of um, promote to others as well within the district. I think that would be... That'd be really positive. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you okay, very thank much. You. Cheers. Um, okay, so leading on from that one, if you refer to page um, appendix A1 on page 39, yep. this is um, a review, a criteria review, basically, on defibrillators. Now, I've mentioned a few things. I've done a little bit of um, sort of research into defibrillators. We've had a qu quite a few, we've had a few queries from parishes wondering why defibrillators aren't funded. So I thought I'd just do a little bit of sort of reading and then we've had sort of some, a few sort of um, meetings on this and it was decided that we could bring this through for discussion. Um, um, guy, um, basically, in the past, um, the British Heart Foundation used to part fund defibrillators, but due to COVID-19, they've paused their offer. Um, and so there, there isn't actually any funding that's available from them at the moment. The cost of defibrillators is around between 800 and 2,500. And um, we've obviously, because of the nature of the lo rural location of a lot of the parishes, obviously the time taken to get to a doctor's surgery or a defibrill defibrillator if they haven't got one, could be crucial in survival. 
Um, so I, I, I basically would, would be to sort of open it up to sort of see people's thoughts on if this could potentially be included. Right, so. I, I'm, I'm quite supportive of defibrillators, but I'm also um, very aware that they are quite expensive to maintain because you need to change the battery and you need to ensure that they are in working condition suitable. So it does cost whoever puts them up additional costs rather than just buying the, the defib. And although there's an awful lot of publicity about how wonderful it is, whichever football it was who got brought back to life and people brought back to life, I think the public also needs to be educated about thinking in terms of whether it is right to bring somebody back who I've met two or three people who have been brought back and who said what the heck did they do that for I was really it would have been much better if I'd been left alone because the rest of my life has been awful so there's a whole lot of ethical issues that nobody really do, do, digs into I think yeah, that, I, I hear what you're saying. I suppose from a, a dispassionate point of view, so to speak, I'm trying to choose my words carefully, mm. um, from a dispassionate point of view, I just wonder, the, the defibs tend to be used for people who are kind of caught short, unexpected. Mm. Um, so... Uh, I mean, we have one at the hub in Melbourne, and we've only got one in Melbourne, as far as I can... There's, yeah, one in Melbourne. So you could argue there could be one or two more, um, and what have you. So I, I'm, I'm kind of on the other side of the track on that one myself. Um, uh, John Williams. Yeah, can I just explain to Mitty where I am on this, because Emma and I have had a, quite a discussion about this. I mean, taking up C's point, first of all, I think it's probably for the local community to make that decision whether they want a defibrillator or not, um, and not for us. Um, I, I personally don't have a problem um, agreeing to include defibrillators in our, um, in our criteria with the same criteria, though, that we have for parish councils, i.e. Mm. that only the smallest parish councils can apply uh, for funding. Um, mm. Because my own experience, if we, we have two defibrillators in Fulbright, actually, one in the recreation ground and one in the high street. Um, but they'd be funded by the by Fulbright Parish Council. Mm. And, um, and I think, you know, I don't see this being any different to any other funding in that we've we feel that because parish councils aren't capped, that the largest and medium-sized parish councils, if they want to do this, they can go ahead and do it, and they can increase the precept to do that. Um, but I do appreciate, you know, that we should have this, we should apply the same criteria regarding small parish councils that we do for all grants and allow small parish councils to apply uh, for this. But I would add, and I take on board what uh, Sue said because uh, we did have an unfortunate incident with the one in the pavilion uh, which apparently wasn't working or didn't work um, and I would suggest that if a, a small parish council does want us to um, fund a defibrillator that they also have to provide uh, evidence that they are going to maintain it and that they have the funds to, to do that uh, before we agree to give the funding. But otherwise, I think that defibrillators should be included um, in, in the community chest uh, criteria. But again, as I say, uh, only for small councils. 
<coughs> okay, John, I've got, I've got some criteria to go along with. Sorry, I'll come back to you in a second, uh, Claire, if I may. Right, but yep. this, is, this is a very important point that John brought up with regards to maintenance and what have you. Um, Melbourne, Melbourne's DFib was uh, registered with the ambulance service because we've got the ambulance headquarters in, in Melbourne. They now, there's, a, there's a system they now use, which is like an outside agency, and they, you register with them and they then badger you for a weekly or monthly test. So you'd have to comply through that process. But it, because you need to know, you know, you have to put the dates of the pads in, you have to show the battery's been checked, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all these other bits and pieces. It's not just the DFib. I believe all DFibs should be in a public space and 24-7 accessible. They can't be shut in a building behind a closed door and only available during working hours. So you will need an outside case which has a power supply to it because it, that, that case has to be heated and it, at a certain level, otherwise the gel packs for the, mm -hmm. the, thing, uh, the pads on your chest go brittle and they don't work. So you'll need a power supply, a case, you will need the extra spare pack of, of pads. You have to have those in there. There is also the, whether or not you go for the juvenile ones, but they don't necessarily recommend that. And as I say, it has to be public. With your blessing, John, I think well, we would, through the community chest, perhaps say, we will fund the DFib, the, the actual piece of kit, right, up to a level. Um, but you as the parish, will then undertake to maintain it and provide all of the ancillary equipment, the case, the fitting of it, the power supply, the da 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 da, da. Now, I think, would that be what people would agree with, uh, colleagues? An evidence, sorry, an evidence... No, you're not on that. Evidence of uh, having the ability to carry out that maintenance check yeah. at, at a regular yeah. point. And, and that is an ongoing cost. Absolutely. I'll come, okay, Claire, you were first in the queue. Um, well, I'm just wondering actually how this has come up because I would have thought that across the district, the great majority of parish councils have defibrillators, which they have funded, which parish councils have funded. So, uh, yeah, maybe people are shaking their head and saying no. Um, and I would have thought actually that funding them through parish councils is the most appropriate way to do it, but um, that's my view anyway, but uh, others I'm may gonna, differ. I'm going to come to John, Claire, but I, actually I think this is something, you know we did with the mobile warden scheme, you could argue that community groups would get on with it. I actually think this is something we should encourage, John. Yeah, can I say, the reason this has come up, because Longstow applied uh, for a defibrillator, I understand. And Longstow is, is a small parish council and would would qualify for funding. From, and it was refused on the grounds that we don't fund defibrillators. And ah. this is how it came about. Right. Okay. Hey. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm prepared to be advised by others who know much more about this. I'm, I'm a bit... A number of my parishes already have defib defibrillators. They, the parish yeah. funded those themselves. Um, mm. It's considered as, uh, inverted commas, an essential thing for them to have in the local area. Um, one area we may be able to help, I, I need to think about the criteria and what we do, is ongoing training. Uh, Triplo this week have had training um, uh, in, in, you know, uh, dealing with those uh, people who have experienced cardiac arrest. We had a, a local farmer, a, a very young farmer, who experienced cardiac arrest and was uh, and survived after going to Addenbrooke's. So um, I just wonder, and I've asked the question at all my parishes, how many people in, in the parish do have uh, training? You know, we're, we're not talking of dozens of people. It's just there's a critical mass of people who have yeah. training so mm -hmm. that if an incident takes place, it's not just one or two people, somebody may be on holiday, somebody may be ill, it's you know a group of eight or ten who are available. So um, I'd just like us to think about that. Um, but I think we have to apply the same criteria uh, that larger parishes, as we say, with um, community chest, should be able to raise the money to do this uh, and provide it, and then we look at the smaller parishes. Yeah. So that's you got your answer, Emma. 
Brilliant. Thank you. And I'm assuming that applies to obviously normal community groups as well, not just the parish council. It's exactly the same criteria in respect to the normal general community chest. So parish in non-profit organisations as well, not just your small parish councils, they they can apply to. I wonder if it's worth, colleagues, in looking at John as well, that we do a, uh, an audit of our villages and towns that we have within South Cairns, just as a matter of interest. Um, I, it would perhaps, by doing the audit, advertise to the smaller parishes that we're doing this. Um, but B, it would also give us a, a picture of the coverage of DFIBs across, across the area as far as parishes are concerned? I don't think there's anything wrong in us doing a, um, uh, an off-the-record, you know, a, as part of our community planning um, to, to talk to parish councils and see if they have defibrillators and basically ask them how they manage them. I would not want us to be in a situation where we could be liable um, if, if something happens. Um, mm -hmm. And the parish council says, "Well, we did tell South Cairns this. Um, I, you know, it's not our place um, to be responsible for, for, for the provision and and the operation of this equipment. Um, so I think we we need to tread very carefully. I think as part of a, a um, I think of a fact finding um, survey, uh, you know, by by the community's team to find out." you know, basic facilities in each village, for example, and we could ask the question, do you have a defibrillator and how is it, how is it uh, managed? But I wouldn't want us to actually get involved in the actual provision and operation of those defibrillators because, you know, it could lead us to be, you know, liable if, if, if something goes wrong. That wasn't so the we intention need to tread of, very carefully on yeah, That wasn't the intention of the audit, it was just to find out, really. If essentially, what's our exposure? So, you know, or likely exposure. So, Okay, well, that's Emma's careful wording then. <laughs> uh, go from there. Right, thank you, Emma. Is there any more to do on that? That's um, it now, isn't it? Yep, that's it. Yep, thank you. Right then. Is everybody happy? Colleagues, John, you happy? Yeah. Guys, you happy? Yeah. Right. In that case, uh, is Catherine still on a call? Is um, has Catherine got anything else, or is she okay? I am indeed still here. All fine, thank you. We'll do the decision sheet for you now. That's. Oh, we thought we could catch you out and having a coffee or something. I've been listening. And there was no awkward questions as well either, was there? So. Right, Chair, I just want to. Um... Just say, can we have two decision notices for the community chest, please? One for the alteration of the criteria and one for the decisions of the, the community chest from today. Thank you. Brilliant. Right. In that case, then, uh, it's a thank you very much from us to you online. And uh, we'll see you again shortly. But the date of the next meeting will be 29th of Friday, 29th of April of this year at 10 o'clock. Thank so you. That's it. Thank you very much. And thank you to members of the public for watching Bye, in or listening in. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.